Next, we're going on to the skirt back. And we basically need to do the same thing that we did with the skirt front, is sew the left panel to the center and the right panel to the center. But we have to get into this skirt in some way, shape, or form, and that's with a zipper. So I'm going to put a zipper down the center back. Here's the pattern piece, and as you well know, I cut the center panel in black. And you also likely know that black is one of the most difficult colors to photograph for you to see well everything that I'm doing. So we have an excellent instructional video on doing a center applied zipper. And it's from our Make It Sew DVD series for beginners and intermediate seamstresses. And it's done in colorful fabric with a contrasting color of zipper and contrasting color of thread. And so that you can see exactly the steps that I'm going to be doing exactly right here, we're going to show you this video and I'm going to meet you at the other end. And while you're watching that, I'm going to be applying the zipper into the center back of my skirt. The technique I'll demonstrate is the centered applied zipper. Where is that used? Well, typically down the back of a skirt or the back of a dress. And so here you can see on the mannequin, the centered applied, it's got a lap right there and a lap right here, and it's evenly down the center. Let's take a look at how you do that. Here's my sample fabric set up. And I purposefully bought a zipper that was nine inches long, but I only want it seven inches long because I'd like to show you in another video how to cross that with a waistband and make sure that the zipper doesn't go flying off the top. So what I've done is marked a little blue mark right there at my seven inch marking from there to the stop. And I'm going to make a mark on the inside of the fabric and that I know is seven inches down. You'll also notice another mark that I've made right here, and that's 5 eighths of an inch down. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself some stitching room to put the waistband in place. Then what you're going to do is take the right sides together, and of course I have marked this wrong sides compared to the right side, which looks the same. So I'm going to place right sides together and just line up, in this case it would be the waist edge, and there is where I'm going to stop my regular stitch length here. This section for the zipper is going to get basted and as if you were coming from the hem, you would be using regular stitch length. So I'm putting it into the sewing machine and I'm lining up the cut edge with the 5 8 inch marking and this is regular stitch length and so that's 2.5 millimeters long. You'll also notice that I have previously seam finished the edge of this fabric because it's just too difficult to get in after you've got the zipper applied to do any seam finishing. I'm coming up to my seven inch mark. I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to come forward. And now at this point, I'm going to take the machine stitch length and turn it to the longest basting stitch it will go. On my machine, that's six millimeters long. In some of your machines, that is five millimeters long. So just take it as long as it will go and then stitch up to the top. Of course, that is all in basting. Then, before we press this open, from the point of the basting where it starts up to the top, I'm just going to make some little breaks in the basting. So take your seam ripper and my seam ripper seems to be a little bit on the dull side. You can tell that I have certainly used it. Time for a new one. I'm making some breaks in the thread here because it's just going to make it easier to pull that basting out afterward. Now what you're going to do is take your seam and press it open. And of course, you can definitely press on top of a seam roll to make sure that you don't get any other wrinkles. But since this is nice and flat, I can do it just exactly like I'm doing it. Pressing is just an up and down action. Steam is best. And there we go. Now, the zipper is going to, this is my top up here. That's where my mark was. And now I need to place the right side of this zipper tape onto the right side of the seam allowance 
So that means that I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to flop it over like that. And in order to get this tape to stay on the seam allowance while I'm working with it, I'm going to use one of these little products. This one's called Wash Away Wonder Tape. I have another one called Disappearing Basting Tape. Either of those will work. And I'm going to take this tape, I've rolled off a section of it, and I'm going to place it right down the center of that seam allowance. And I'm just going to press really nice and hard on this because you want that sticky portion of the tape. They say that you can sew through this and it's not going to gum up your needle and you can also it will remove when it's being washed when the garment is being washed so let's stick that tape down now you take this cardboard a cardboard you take the paper backing off and that's what it looks like it leaves this little bit of sticky basting tape right on the seam allowance so now I'm going to take the zipper and I'm going to lay it in place. Remember that I bought a zipper that was too long and so there's my mark and I want to start that at my 5, five eighths inch mark and my steam took the 5 eighths away so let's just put my seam gauge in place there to do this. So this blue mark that I made I'm just going to line it up with that and I'm going to remove that. I'm going to roll the teeth of the zipper, that zipper coil, I'm going to roll that right down dead center on that basted seam like this. Keep it as centered as you can. And the purpose of course of that basting tape is to hold it in place until you get stitching with this. Now. I still don't trust my basting tape. <laughs> I am now going to take the tape, the, the um, uh, what do I want to say, the zipper tape, and I'm going to baste it right on that seam allowance only. So once I start manipulating this, I don't want anything to release. I'm going to put a pin right there, another one right here, and let me get this other side a pin in there because I don't want anything releasing on me because I've got that nice and centered. So now I'm going to be taking that over to the sewing machine and basting just the zipper tape to the seam allowance. Now in order to do that, you need to change your regular presser foot and you need to put on the zipper foot that comes with your sewing machine. That's what mine looks like. And you can leave your machine on basting if you want to. That's fine since that's the last stitch length we were at. And now I'm just going to go down the center of the zipper tape and my seam allowance with this basting stitch. And this is now really going to secure that zipper tape onto the seam allowance. I'll remove that pin now that I've got it nice and stable. And I'm going to go right below that zipper stop I need my needle in the down position and, oh you can't come across, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Let's just remove that. I was going to go across and stitch the other side, but you can't do that because I want you to now, from this position, we're going to flop the fabric this way and now I'm stitching just the zipper tape onto the seam allowance. So now I'm going to put it in the machine going the other direction and stitch down the center. And again, I'm still on basting. I'm just securing the zipper tape onto the seam allowance. There we go. Okay, now we know it's well secured and in place. So the next thing to do is open this out so that you're now looking at the right side of your fabric and I want to feel where that zipper stop is it's right there use your fingers to feel this I'm going to stitch to right below it so I'm going to put a pin in there 
and that came out. You can see it's right below that, the stop on that zipper. And I did that pin a little bit crooked, and this is important to get it straight. That looks better. So now what you're going to do is take half inch wide tape, and you're going to set this tape. I'll just cut a piece long enough here. And you're going to set this tape right down the center of that seam allowance or the seam that you made. And you can see through the tape and this is going to give you a guide for stitching. That looks pretty, pretty good. All right. Now, when you start stitching your garment permanently to the zipper, it's best if you stitch from the bottom up on one side and then stop and the bottom up on the other side and stop. And the reason is that if you've got real slippery fabric and if you were to stitch down this side, pivot, go across and up this side, you could end up with this pulling. And how do I know? From experience. So let's do it the right way. We're going to start at the bottom, stitch across and then up. So I want to, my needle is on the left hand side of the zipper foot, so I'll start on this side. And you do want to put your machine stitch length back to normal, being 12 stitches per inch. And I'm going to start right where my pin is. I'm going to put the needle in the seam allowance. I definitely need the needle in the down position. I'm not going to back stitch. These threads I will pull to the inside and tie off. So I'm going to just come to the edge of the tape, my tape marker. The needle is in the down position. Raise the presser foot, pivot the fabric around the needle, and now I'm going to continue down the side of the tape that I've marked. And when I come up to the top, because it's the finishing portion here, even though I'm going to cross it with the seam allowance, I will stitch in reverse and then come forward and raise the needle into the up position and that stitch that side. Now, in order to stitch across the other side and up, I do need to change my uh, zipper foot to the other side. So in my sewing machine, it's a faf. This is, as I said, that particular zipper foot. You may not need to do that. You might just need to change your needle position. So now I'm taking the fabric. Again, I'm going to start with my needle exactly on that center stitching line or center seam and lower the presser foot. Do not back stitch. Come across. And I'm right on the edge of that tape. Needle is in the down position raise the presser foot, pivot around, pivot the fabric around the needle, lower back down, and then begin stitching. And that's all you do. Now, get in there and remove the tape. And of course, I've been stitching with a, 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 a contrasting color thread so that you can really see this. And you can see how that removed. And I'll just remove this little bit right here. And then the very last thing that you need to do, well, there's actually a couple of things. You want to pull these threads to the inside and tie them off. And then the other thing that you need to do is remove your basting. And you have to remove your basting now from the right side. And so if you remember, we did clip those basting stitches about every fourth or fifth stitch and it's just going to make it easier to remove this stitching and so you do it from the right side. And there you have a perfect centered applied zipper. So in one of the following videos I'm going to show you how to set the waistband in place and of course the zipper head will be down here so that when you finish stitching the waistband in place, that waistband is going to prevent the zipper from flying off. I hope you've enjoyed this video.
And if you have, I invite you to join the Sherpa Designs community if you haven't already. And you can do that in three easy steps. Number one, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is SureFit Designs. Secondly, make sure to sign up for our newsletter list. And you can do that by going to surefitdesigns.com and there are free gifts to get you started. And if you happen to be a Facebook fan, we do have a private group. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SureFit Designs. Request to join. Make sure you answer the three questions and I'll approve you. Thanks so much for watching.